Hello folks and welcome to my playthrough of The Lantern, or El Farol in Spanish, I believe. My name is The Lone Adventurer, thank you very much for joining me on this adventure. If you enjoy watching videos of solo gaming content, do consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell notification icon. Now this is a game that funded successfully earlier this year, or late last year, I've had it around for a while now, on Crowdfunder, which is a website a little bit like Kickstarter, I guess. I haven't spent a lot of time on Crowdfunder. I think I found this game through an email newsletter for solo gamers or something of that nature. And it's from a designer called Oscar. I won't attempt to read out Oscar's full name because I think I might butcher it. But Oscar is also known as the Blind Archivist and he's got an itch.io page where you can get this game, uh, a digital copy at least, and possibly um, have a hunt around to see if there are physical copies available anywhere as well. So this is a game, as I said, that I got through uh, crowdfunding and then received through the post. And it comes in this super cool little envelope. It's got some super spooky artwork on the cover. Look at him. Proper terrifying. So uh, let's get it out of the envelope and then I can give you a little bit of an overview of what this game is all about. So this is a journaling game, and it's one of those games that basically comes as a leaflet. So we've got that information there, we've got this information on the back, and that is the entirety of the game. And I'm not going to lie, I find games that are this minimal, that have an emphasis on journaling to be a little bit intimidating, People who watch this channel regularly will know that I like games that give you gamey structures so you know exactly what you're doing and how you do it and where you're going to go and what you can do in a turn and things like that. And this is a journaling game where the emphasis is primarily on creativity and uh, writing. You, you, you're journaling as you're going, you're imagining yourself as a character and you're writing things from that character's point of view. However, if that sounds like not your bag, like it isn't necessarily my bag a lot of the time, this is a game that gives you some structure and feels like you are playing a game. As you can see here, we have got some resources to help us out. We've got a little card here that shows us the game turns, what you do in a sequence. That's reassuringly gamey. We've got some setup instructions here. We've got a little chart that charts uh, conditions that your character might have. And if they end up with a certain amount of conditions, then they perish and the game is over. We've got some characters here eight in total, four on that side and four on this side. And all these really do, other than maybe giving you um, a sort of a starting point for how you imagine your character to be, is each one has just a sort of a, uh, a different ability or in-game uh, sort of adjustment to what you do. So it gives you a sort of a slight bit of variation in terms of how the game plays. And we've got some tokens, which again, reassuringly gamey. You've got some things that you have to keep track of in the game, and you do that with tokens. You need to draw a map, and you uh, move things around the map, and that sort of thing. So it feels quite gamey, and I think that's what drew me to it. When I saw it on the crowdfunder page, I thought, that looks like the sort of journaling game I can get behind. But I haven't even told you what it is, really. What's going on? So it's called The Lantern, and you are... I'll tell you what, we've got a bit of flavour text on the back. Maybe I will read it out to you. Nothing but trees, day after day. This cursed forest is shrouded in eternal night. 
I still haven't found my daughter and I can't pick up the pieces of my broken heart. That strange creature offered me a lantern with a faint white flame and told me I would need it to find her. I don't know why I chose to believe this obvious lie, but I need to think she is safe. I go back into the thicket in search of flame wood to keep the lantern alive. This flame is the only light in the forest and this journal my only link to my memories. Every step is a risk. Malevolent creatures lurk behind every branch and the weather is changing. Sometimes I wonder if this is but a dream, but I look at the flame and I can only think to press on. Others suffer a worse fate. Some go mad as they blindly and aimlessly reach for their loved ones in the darkness. I cannot help but feel responsible, but I must move on. I must find a way to purge this darkness and save my daughter. The answer must lie somewhere in the forest. So The Lantern is a solo journaling and role-playing game of exploration, strategy and resource management that uses a deck of cards, some dice and a handful of tokens. The goal of the game is to find a loved one who has disappeared in a cursed forest where night is eternal and evil dances in the shadows in the form of a strange creature. You will scour the forest in search of clues, trying to survive while keeping the lantern lit, as it is the only source of light. So we are exploring this forest with the hope of finding a loved one who has gone missing, potentially taken by this mysterious creature who is also the entity that gave us the lantern of the title of the of the game. And this lantern is an interesting mechanic. Now, I have played this game before, but it was a little while ago. I played it in preparation for making a video, but then got distracted by other games. I never fully wrapped my head around the mechanic of the lantern. I understood what was going on, but it's quite a subtle beast the lantern your relationship to it is a little confusing or a little mysterious because you have to keep the lantern lit if the lantern goes out then it's game over but the stronger the lantern's light the more negative things will happen at least that's my understanding of it you essentially move between two uh, sequences of, of actions. You have the character's turn, your turn, and then when that is finished, you have the forest turn. And in the forest turn, dangerous things happen. And you choose as many actions from a list of actions that are, none of them are good, and you choose as many as there are flame tokens on the lantern at the end of the character's turn. So that's interesting. The, the stronger the lantern's flame, the more dangerous things will happen. But if the lantern goes out, it's game over. So I won't explain anything more about the game. We will just get it set up and then we'll make a start. So I might just pause get a nice setup going in front of us and come back and then we'll talk about what we're going to be doing. Okay, here we are, part of the way through setup. Now it took me a little while to work out how to correctly set up this game and what all the bits and pieces were for, but once you work it out, it all makes quite a lot of sense. We've got four different decks one that's hearts, one that's diamonds, one that's spades, and one that's clubs. Um, and then uh, we've got this little handy card in the middle that shows us which is which. I'm just going to flip this over. The other side has got the setup instructions on, and we're not quite finished with setup yet. Let me just point out that uh, spades deck has got some kings and queens in it, and the diamond deck has got some kings and queens in it. So that's 
this deck and this deck over here. All the kings and queens are in those decks there because the goal of the game is to investigate the forest until we find our loved one by gathering the four queens or to end the curse of the forest by finding the four kings. And the diamonds deck is the investigation deck and the uh, spades deck is something else. What's the spades deck for? Okay, so the spades deck, it looks to me like is gradually added to the investigation deck. So those cards go into that deck. And as we're investigating, uh, th that the investigation deck will increasingly include cards of that deck. But the point is that eventually we'll find, hopefully, before we uh, perish, four kings or four queens. And they're, they're all in those decks here. While we're talking about decks, we've also got the Explore decks, along with the Investigation deck. Those two decks will uh, show us what we are finding as we are investigating and exploring. And yeah, the other two decks, uh, I'm not 100% sure, I guess that we'll, we'll see, we'll see as, as, as we're going along. And we've got um, our map here. We will be drawing our starting location in the middle here in a moment. In fact, shall we just do that? Let's have a look. So prepare the map and add the two locations of the starting zone. To do this, roll 1d4 and consult the explore table. Right, so we have got a 1, which is going to give us locations A and 8. So look at the explore table, we've got A, which is a small village, and 8, which is a flamewood forest. So I'm going to draw that on here. Alright, so I've drawn our little um, village and the trees of our flamewood forest. I've also written S and T, S for shelter, T for trade. There's actually icons for these things. The trade icon is a little bag and the shelter icon is a little tent. But I didn't fancy drawing those, so I'm just going to use letters instead. Shelter is important because if you're not in shelter at the end of your turn, bad things happen. Uh, I can't remember what, but you know, bad things happen. The ability to trade is good as well. If you're in a trade location, you can exchange one flame wood, which is important, for two supplies and one tool, and vice versa. So flame wood, supplies, tools, these are the resources that you're keeping track of. And actually, we need to um, get ourselves some of those resources. You start the game with three flame. I've just got my icons, my tokens rather, up here. Here we go. That's what flame tokens look like. Where can I put those? I think we've probably just about got room down here. One flame wood. There's the flame wood. Two tools and three resources. So tools look like that. And resources look like that. So those are our starting um, resources. And with that, we are almost ready to start. Now we need to write our first journal entry, including information about who you are, who you lost in the forest, and how you came in possession of the lantern. So these are things that you have to come up with yourself using a bit of imagination, which I sometimes struggle with, but we're going to have a go. Now, we it's not like we have nothing to go on whatsoever. We do have our character card, which I randomly selected from the eight available. So we are playing as the woodsman, and we have an ability of chopping wood, unsurprisingly. So when we're chopping wood, we get one extra flame wood per action. So I'm a woodsman. I've got to decide who I have lost in the forest and how I came to be in possession of the lantern. I'm going to have a little think, write something down, and then bring you back. All right, so I've written our first journal entry in my uh, scrawl here. I've picked a name. 
I said, I am Corey, a woodsman. A terrible thing has happened. My brother, whose trade is the same as mine, is lost, swallowed up by the forest. I turned my back for a moment and he was gone. Next to his axe was a lantern, the light gently flickering. In the shadows beyond the trees I thought I saw a figure, certainly not human. Then it was gone. And with that, our setup is complete and we're ready to play the game. So if we turn over this card here, we can see what happens in a character's turn. Firstly, we take eight actions and I can use this tracker here to keep track of that. We'll see how that goes. I might replace that with a dice. And a note here that we must end our actions in a location with a shelter or suffer two conditions. And these are the conditions over here. If at any point the lantern reaches six flames, we can perform a free action. At the moment we're at three flames. At the end of turns four and eight, sorry, actions four and eight, we spend a flame token. If the lantern goes out during the character's turn, during our turn, Cory will be lost in the darkness forever. So that means that if we go through this entire uh, round without gaining any more flames, we'll get to the end and only have one left because we'll lose one at the end of action four and at the end of action eight. And presumably there are other things that can happen that will result in us losing a flame. So the risk is that the lantern will go out. So one of your priorities, if not perhaps the most important priority, is to maintain that lantern. So we're going to do eight actions. Once we've done those eight actions, we'll write a little update in our journal, in our diary. Then the character is exhausted. We turn the card over and we do the forest turn. So let's have a little look in the game pamphlet here. And we can see what our options are for our eight actions. We can explore, move the character to an adjacent empty space on the map and draw a, a heart card and the heart cards are the explore cards. We can travel so we can move the character to an adjacent location presumably that's already been explored. We can investigate so we can uh, look for greater detail in the location where we are at um, we can kindle, which means to spend flamewood tokens and gain uh, flame tokens as a result. We can chop wood, so that's only in locations with the little wood symbol. We can gather supplies. We can build, so we could build our own shelter, um, or we can trade, or we can heal to uh, heal a condition that we've already gained. And I've just realized that uh, our starting location was the small village with the Flamewood Forest next to it. I, I, did, I, I made a note that we could trade and use it as shelter, but I didn't make a note that we can uh, chop wood here. So I need to make that note as well, that we can gain Flamewood here. So should we pop a little F for that one? And we need something to put on the map to track where we are. And I think it's this, well, I think we can use this little icon here. I'm gonna use this little lantern to represent where we are at on the map. Right, so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? do. So I think I'm going to start by exploring. So this is to move the character to an adjacent empty space on the map and then we'll draw an explore card. We'll imagine the location and think of some details. Draw the location on the map and its icons, so the letters that I'm using instead of icons, and then shuffle the discards if you run out of cards. Okay, so I'm going to move over here. And we need to draw a heart card. Nine of hearts. So the nine of hearts gives us a glade, also with flame wood that can be cut. Um, I'm not going to be very good at thinking of additional details. Uh, 
Maybe the uh, surrounding trees, the undersides are lit up by fireflies. Let's just leave it at that for the glade. So I'm just gonna draw our glade on here. And there we go, that's our glade. I'll make a note of that in a minute when we've finished all our actions. So that was our first action, that was exploring a new location. Oh, and I've got to put an F on there so we know uh, we can um, get flame wood here. And maybe that's what I'm going to do. Maybe we uh, need to chop down some flame wood. And remember, since I am the woodsman, I get plus one flame wood for the action. So with an action, you get one flame wood. For each tool spent, you get one additional flame wood in the same action. I'm not going to spend my tools. I'm just going to do one action. So actually, we've done the first action. This is our second action that we're doing now. That's going to get me two flame wood. Ordinarily, it would get me one, but since I'm the woodsman, I get two. I think I probably also need to kindle, which means to spend any number of flame wood tokens and gain that many flame tokens. I might just do two because I'm, I'm very conscious that the more flame you have, the more forest actions will happen and the more negative stuff will happen. So I'm just going to spend two and gain two flame brings me to a total of five flame yeah i think six is the maximum so that was action three was um kindling to gain some flame tokens shall we do an investigate action maybe we should do that see how that works so here it says draw a card a diamond card and solve what you find in that location do a control check against the value of the card, then apply the bonus stroke consequence. A location can only be investigated twice. Leave a mark next to the location. Jack, Queen and King cards do not need a control check. Okay, so a little bit to unpack there. Now a control check, you roll d10. If the number is higher than the number on the card, you get the event bonus. If the number is equal or lower, you suffer the consequences. You can spend flame counters to repeat the check. Aha. You can also add plus one to the roll for each tool you expend. And I've got two tools. If you fail the check, return the card to the bottom of the investigation deck without shuffling. So that's if you fail. Presumably that means if you succeed, you don't do that. Well, let's just do it and see how it works. So we're going to draw a diamond card and solve what we find in the location. Ah, it's a king. So if you remember, I said that those decks contain the uh, kings and queens. And if we find the kings and queens, then we are one step closer to succeeding in the game. So we've got a special section down here, and it says for a king, each clue, so a king gives you a clue. Each clue gives you new information about the curse. How did it happen? How can you remove it? Who or what is the strange creature? So a bit more creativity is required. I'm just going to pause, have a little think, and bring you back when I've worked out how I'm going to respond to that. All right, so I've sort of deferred working out how the curse happened and how we can remove it. I've sort of chosen to have this clue give us something small about the creature. That's all I've got so far. So I've said uh, we discovered a clearing lit by fireflies, muddy footprints, oddly shaped and deep set in the soft ground lead away into the undergrowth. So maybe this clue so has given us some information about where the creature dwells. That's what I'm going with. That's what we've got so far. Yeah, that's all I've got. So that was action four. Now at the end of action four, we lose a flame token. So I think we need to move back to the settlement because we need to make sure that at the end of our actions, we are in the settlement. Let's cut down some more wood. 
two more wood. That's going to be action number six. For action number seven, I'm going to trade, which means I can exchange one flame wood for two supplies and one tool. So I've got plenty of supplies, plenty of tools, and we have one more action remaining. So for our final action, I guess we'll just chop down some more wood. So we've got plenty of resources to be getting on with. Lovely. So that is the end. Oh yes, and then at the end of action eight, we lose a flame. And that is the end of the character's turn. So we've written a diary with the experiences of that turn. I, I did that. Um, as we were going. So the character succumbs to exhaustion. We turn the card over. And then this is the forest turn. Choose as many actions as flame tokens on the lantern at the end of the character's turn. You can roll d10 instead of choosing. These actions are mandatory and cannot be repeated in the same turn. I think I'm going to roll d10 rather than make the decision myself. So here we go. Nine. Amnesia. Move the character to a random location and cross out the previous day's journal entry. <sighs> okay, we've only got one location, so I guess we wake up in the clearing, not remembering what happened in the clearing. So that's the first one. We've got three flame tokens, so that's the first thing that's going to happen. Five, disorient. Move the character to an unknown place on the map, forcing their first action to be explore. Oh, wow. So let's go up this way into an unknown location. And the last forest action, two. Twist reality. Add a card to the investigation cards and shuffle the pile. So we need to add one of these to there and then give that a shuffle. Next thing, we roll 1d4. On a 1 or a 2, the lantern loses a flame token. 4. So we don't lose a flame token. The character awakens. Spend a resource to feed or suffer a condition. Aha. So I need to use one of my resources. That is gone. And then that is the end of the forest turn. And I think we will stop there, folks, for this video and continue on in another one. So that was our first full uh, turn of the lantern. We discovered a couple of locations. I think we'll get more into the rhythm of the mechanics in the second video, but I hope you enjoyed that, folks. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.